Good morning. This is June the 11th, Thursday morning, and we are looking at mercy this week, all week long, the mercy of our great God. And I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, we'll be looking at God's mercy this morning. So let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence, may we receive grace, for we are in a time of need. We're in a time of personal need, of family need, of community and national need, but also in need in the body of Christ. I pray, Father, that you would meet these needs in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and that you would guide us into all truth today, Holy Spirit, as we look into the Word of God. May we grow and mature in our knowledge and understanding of our great God. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul talks a lot about mercy and grace and love. He, he talks about these things so much. And in Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to look in verse 4 and 5 and see the richness of God's mercy. Uh, we have been, uh, during this time of staying at home and all, uh, we have been making ice cream at our house. And uh, we have tweaked the recipe that we use to make it more creamy and more rich, to give it more flavor. Uh, and so uh, we're looking for that richness in our ice cream uh, that satisfies our taste buds, that satisfies our longings for the ice cream. Uh, the toppings we use, uh, different toppings. And so we've enjoyed this time uh, as a family to uh, find the richness and the creaminess of, of the ice cream that we're making at home. And so I want you to think about the richness, not monetarily, not a bank account, but just the richness, the flavor. Uh, we have uh, bought some uh, butter that was on sale at one of the grocery stores, and it's from uh, grass-fed cows, the cream is, and it tastes different. There's a, there's a different richness to it that you don't get in regular butter. And so uh, think about these things, about the richness and the flavor that draws us to it. Uh, and so as we look at this, it says in verse 4, but God being rich in mercy. Now, he, he has much uh, mercy. Uh, it's abundant. Uh, he has a wealth of it. But also I want you to think about the flavor of it, about the richness of it, not just the rich part of it, but the richness of it and how it draws us and we, we just want a little more and want a little more. It says he's rich in mercy because of the great love with which he's loved us. God's grace is great. We've talked about that. His mercy is great. We've talked about that. And his love is great toward us. Uh, it's, it's just the greatest thing we can imagine. I remember as a child uh, waiting for my birthday to come and to see the cake and the ice cream and the presents. It was a great day for me. Uh, it was the only day of the year that I got to choose what we ate for supper. We did that on our birthdays. Uh, my mother uh, would ask us ahead of time, what would you like for your birthday meal? And uh, it, it was just a, a fabulous day. And that's what God's love and his mercy and grace is to us. It says, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And we've already talked about this, how Jesus didn't wait for us to get better. Yahweh didn't wait. It would have never happened. Never in, in a, a thousand, a million, a zillion lifetimes could we ever get better. Uh, that's why reincarnation doesn't work, is we don't progress and get better. If anything, we progress and get worse. Uh, the laws of thermodynamics, we're in a state of degression, not evolution. And so we look at this, while we were in this state, bound by our sin, tainted by our sin, Jesus came and died for us. What great love that is. What great mercy that is. 
and that he did this while we were still disbelieving and disobedient. <clears throat> then in verse 6, we see the blessings of his mercy. Because he saved us, because he transferred us into his kingdom, because of his grace and mercy and love, he has raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see, in God's sight and mind, we are sinless. We are totally sanctified. It's a done deal. And we are seated with him in glory. Uh, it's not something that will happen someday, but in, to God, it's already happened because when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our down payment of the glory to come, according to Ephesians, Paul in Ephesians. And so God looks at it. He sees the blood of Christ. He sees the work of the Holy Spirit. And to him, it's, it's already done. And so he says the blessing is that, like Jesus said in John chapter 14, He's prepared a place for us, and in, in all reality, spiritual reality, that's where we are now. We may not be there yet in this world, but there's a, a place with our name on it in heaven. It says, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. God loves to bless us. It brings him honor and glory. It brings him pleasure and delight. Uh, it says in Scripture that he delights in his children and he delights in doing good. He's exercising his character and his personality toward us. And it says that we're seated there. He's done this and this is a blessing because he is, he is going to show the immeasurable riches of himself to mankind. What a glorious thing. What a glorious blessing that the God of creation would come down and desire to show himself to us. He's not hiding himself. We don't have to hunt like a needle in a haystack. He shows himself to those who are seeking him. And then there's work, the work of mercy. It says in verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not of the result of works, so that no one may boast. You see, there's nothing we can pay for God's mercy and grace. There's nothing we can pay for his love. He freely gives it to us. He desires for us having it. He's holding it out to us. And the work of God's mercy, you remember mercy means not getting what we deserve. It's that we don't get the wrath and the punishment that we deserve for our sins. That is his working out in the grace of God through our faith in Jesus Christ. The work of mercy is to bring people to salvation, to forgive sins, to wipe the slate clean through Jesus Christ, that our lives might be changed. That's his mercy. His mercy is not getting, we don't get what we deserve. His grace is we get what we don't deserve, that seated with him in heavenly places. So his mercy works, and is worked out through grace and faith. And then in verse 10, it says, we see the plan of mercy. It says, for we are his workmanship. You know, God created us. So why would she, we, why should we, I'm sorry, why should we be upset because he's working in and through us? Uh, he has every right to do it. The joy of a believer's heart is that we want him to work in and through us. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. When we do good works, when we're thoughtful of other people, when we extend a loving hand, when we go out of our way, uh, to help someone, to do something, to share the gospel, spiritual good works, uh, uh, praying for people. Uh, it, when we do these things out of love, not compulsion, we're not compelled to do it. If we're compelled, it's because of our love for him, because he first loved us. And if we do these things compelled by the love that whelms up in our soul, 
that we delight and find joy in doing them. It says, God, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God prepared the opportunities for these good works, the desires for these good works, and then in his mercy, he worked that out by saving us and, and giving us the calling upon our lives to do these good works. You see, his mercy is all around us because we don't deserve to work for him. We don't deserve to have faith in him. We don't deserve any of the blessings that his mercy gives to us. We don't deserve mercy at all. And yet he freely and lovingly gives it. He's offering it to you today. I don't know if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've received his mercy, but it's offered to you today. So don't put it off. I can imagine that if we were sitting in a courtroom and I was guilty of something and the judge says, I have mercy on you, so I'm not going to sentence you to death. I wouldn't ignore it. I wouldn't say, see you tomorrow, judge. We'll try this again. I would be excited. I would, I would say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I would go out of that courtroom rejoicing. And yet so many are presented with the mercy of God, called to faith in Jesus Christ and refusing to believe. It's the same thing. Walking away from the mercy and grace of an almighty God. I pray that you will seek him and that you will find him today and that you will receive this mercy that he freely offers to you and the grace that he freely offers to you. You say, well, I'm already a believer in Jesus Christ. I don't need grace and mercy. Oh, yes, we do. Every day of our lives, we need his mercy because we stumble. We need his mercy because we forget, because we are frail. We need the mercy of God. We need the grace of God to get through every day, to wake up every day. We need it. So I pray that you know him and that you understand him by faith. And if you have questions about what you've heard, I pray that you contact our church through our website. Uh, call us. The phone number is there. Address is there. Email is there. Uh, and contact us, and we'll be glad to help you in any way we can. I always say, may you be blessed today. I know you are blessed. I pray that you would realize it through faith in Jesus Christ, that you would experience through the power of his Holy Spirit, and that just the joy of his presence in your life as a believer in Jesus Christ would be more than enough for you. Take care today.